Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's video, I will show you how to produce a range of neon elements using the latest Neon and Glow tool. Now the tool comes with an automatic mask on the primary subject. But there are many more other possibilities that you can explore and in this tutorial I will guide you through them. So as you can see we are already in Luminar Neo, catalog module and we are starting by looking at our sample files. As always if you want to download them make sure that you jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and get them from there. Now today's episode comes with one simple wall image, however it also comes with four element templates that will be really handy, so I really suggest you to download it and keep it. So I will explain you that later, so let's start by clicking on the wall image and move it into edit module by clicking on edit on the top of your screen. Now since we are here we can start creating the elements. The first thing I'm going to show you how to create is simple line. To do that we are going to move into our main toolbar, then go into the creative section and as you guessed we are going to go into the neon and glow tool. Make sure that it's nice and visible and we are going to start in the neon tab. By the way if you never used the neon and glow tool before we have a full tutorial covering all the different sliders, controllers and buttons already available on our YouTube channel. So if you want to learn more about how to get the most out of this tool, check it out now. I will link it in a corner of the screen and also put it in the description of this video. Ok, so let's come back to our line. Now to create a line, first thing we need to do is to make sure that we are on the neon tab and then increase the amount slider. By doing that the application will automatically scan the image and look for the main subject. If it finds one then it will create neon around it, around its edges. If it doesn't find one it will create something like this, just a random neon on your image. So either way what we want to do, we want to remove this default neon and create our own. To do this we are going to click on refine object and then make sure that we are on the erase tab. We can of course increase the size of our brush and now very simply brush over the area with the neon and remove it. So now we have a clear image, no neon here and we can create our own. So how we create line? Well first we need to make sure that we are on draw and then we are going to come and adjust our brush. So first come first we are going to bring the size of the brush all the way down and we are going to do exactly the same with the softness brush. The strength slider should stay on 100 and now we are ready. To create line we have two options. You can do it just by hand using your mouse, so very simply try to paint straight line or you can use the shift on your keyboard and in that case you can just make one click at the beginning of the line and then hold shift on your keyboard and click towards the end of your line and the application will automatically create straight line between the two points and you will get straight line just like that. So it depends on the project you are working on, you maybe want to use handheld line or you want to use the straight line, either way you know how to do that. But of course, looking at it, those are not lines. So how can we adjust it? Well, we need to come back to the main neon menu and to do that click on this little arrow and then we are going to be focusing on the indent slider. With the indent slider what we need to do, we need to take it and actually bring it down. And you will see as you are going to come down that basically the two lines will disappear and you will create one simple line. The lower you go with this slider, the less of the line you are going to see and really if you would go all the way down the line would disappear completely. So let's bring it up and as you come back you will see that the glow will appear and then we get the actual neon starting from very thin all the way to very thick and then if you really push it come back to the circle of the line. 
So it is up to you what you prefer. Uh, let's say that we're going to stick to minus eight and end up with two lines just like that. OK, now moving on with our elements, the next thing we're going to be creating is circle. Circle is actually really easy. So let me show you how to do that. Just like before, we have removed the default mask and the default neon. And we're going to simply go into the refine object, still making sure that we are in a neon tab. And then we're going to make sure that we are on draw. After this, we need to adjust our brush. Now we can increase the size, but really before we're going to do that, we're going to again adjust the softness slider and bring it all the way down. By doing that, you will have very clear idea on the size of the circle. So let's say that we're going to make a really big circle. You can go as far as 400. And once we are ready, we can basically position it where we want it and then simply click once. It only takes a second and we get a circle just like that. After this, we can again go back to the neon menu. And just like with the lines, we can now use the indent slider to adjust the size of the circle. So we can make it really big. Let's say that we go all the way to 100. And we can also make it really, really small, almost creating a dot. So let's reset it by double clicking on a slider. And one thing that you should notice is that really the circle has its limits when it comes to size. So if you use the biggest brush and 100, you will get circle, which is about this big. So this is how you easily create a circle neon element. OK, so now we know how to create line and circle. Now, moving on, creating even more elements. This is where our templates will step in. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to go into the layers and in the layers, we're going to click on the little plus sign. After this, we're going to click on load image or add image. And then I want you to navigate into the sample files. There you're going to see the sample image and also folder called elements. Double click on it to open it. And here you're going to see four templates, cross, polygon, square, and triangle. Now we can add all of them. Simply select one, click on open, and then continue doing the same. Click on load image, then square, open, polygon, open, and cross. After this, we all ready and we can start by adding the triangle. So we're going to click on that simply click on it. And as you will see, it will appear on our layers and also on our image. Now, just like with any of the layers, we can now transform it. So we can make it smaller or bigger. We can rotate it around and we can also flip it around using the options in a layer properties. Now, by using the template, you are able to pick exactly the position, location, and also the shape of the triangle. So you can really turn it around, adjust it around your subject and do whatever you want with it. Now, let's say that you don't want exactly symmetrical triangle. Let's say that you want triangle, which maybe is a little bit longer on the side. Well, after that, instead of using the little corners, you can simply click and drag the side of the element. So let's say that you're going to go up and just like that, you have a still triangle, but with different shape. After that, again, you can position it however you want and have it ready for creating the neon. But for us, we're going to create nice symmetrical triangle. So let's go ahead and remove the layer here and add it again, same way. And just like that, we have it here. So let's make it a little bit smaller. And then let's rotate it a little bit as well. So I want to create triangle exactly in this shape. So let's just hit enter. And let's make sure that we have our image selected, the original image with the wall. After this, we're going to go back to our main toolbar, creative section, and again, neon and glow. You already know what to do here. We're going to start by increasing the amount. I found out that usually 40 is a good starting point. 
Just like with the previous examples, we have this default mask here. So we're going to click on refine object, then on erase, make the brush a little bit bigger and simply brush away this mask. Once we are done with this, we're going to click on draw as we're going to be creating the triangle. Again, we're going to take our size slider, bring it all the way down as well as the softness slider. Don't forget that the strength will remain on 100. And once again, make sure that you are on draw. Moving on to our image, let me show you how we're going to use the template. So first come first, let's zoom in. And we can do that by using Command or Control Plus. And while we have the brush selected, you want to hold spacebar on your keyboard to move around. Now we have our corner of the triangle here and you want to position the first point just above this little corner here. So simple one click. Once you do that, use the spacebar, navigate to the second corner, hold shift on your keyboard and simply make the line. Again, moving on, moving to this part of the triangle, again, holding shift, making sure that we are just on the top and again, creating one click. And finally, to finish the shape, we're going to come back again, again, holding shift and again, trying to make sure that we are just on the top of that little shape. And by doing that, we now have the triangle ready to zoom out. Just use command or control plus. And as you can see, we have the initial shape ready. Now to adjust it, you already know what to do. We're coming back to our tool click on the arrow and then play around with the indent. So again, by bringing it down, you will see how the two lines eventually join and they will create one simple triangle. Now it's a good time to also remove our template. We can just right click on it and we can hide it or remove it. And all we have left is the triangle. Now by using the template, it allows us to exactly adjust the position and the shape of the future element and also create very nice symmetrical shapes like triangle, square and so on. Before I show you the fourth and the most advanced technique of creating neon elements in Luminar Neo, I want to quickly remind you about our Luminar Neo Autumn Bundle. The bundle is back for a special price offering over 721 new autumn elements to power up your Luminar Neo tools. You will get extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames, LUTs and presets to easily transform your autumn images with just a few clicks. To find out more about it, head to our website cleverphotographer.com and to get the best possible price, make sure that you use the link in the description of this video. Now moving back into Luminar Neo, let's have a look at the fourth method of creating elements in Luminar Neo. To do that, we're going to use another template. So let's go back to layers, click on the plus sign. And this time we're going to choose the square template. Now, just like before, we can of course transform it around. And don't forget that the square template can work for square, but also for rectangle. All you need to do is to adjust one side individually and that way you actually end up with a really nice rectangle. So let's go ahead and create a rectangle with this example. Once you're happy with the position of the neon and with the shape, simply hit enter again and then make sure that you select the original image, which in our case is the wall. After this, back to creative section, neon and glow, and you already know what to do. Let's increase the amount to 40. When we finish that, we're going to click on refine object, erase, and increase the size of our brush so we can very easily remove the default neon. Once that's done, we're going to again adjust our brush. We're going to bring the size all the way down and bring the softness all the way down too. Don't forget leaving the strength on 100 and make sure that you switch to draw. Once we are done here, we can now start creating the shape. So to do this, we're going to use very similar technique to the triangle. So let's zoom in and start from the bottom again, zoom in and we're going to create the first dot 
just on the corner of the rectangle right here. So simple, one dot. After this, use your spacebar to move around, navigate to the top corner, hold shift on your keyboard and create one simple line there. Again, moving to another corner, holding shift and one more click, then down, all the way, all the way down to the corner. Again, still holding shift and one more click. And to finish the shape, we're gonna come back where we started. Again, holding shift on our keyboard and making sure that we clicking on the corner of the shape. After this, let's zoom out and we have a good starting point for our rectangle. Now, if we go back using our little arrow and then adjusting the indent, we can again create pretty much one line shaped object. However, when you look at it, you can see that the corners are rounded. So yes, it looks like neon. However, what can you do if you would like the corners to be sharp? Well, let's go back and reset our indent slider. And let's go back into refine object. And from here, we're gonna increase the size of our brush. So let's go ahead and go for 190. And the plan is to fill in the space in the middle. So let's go ahead and make a few big brushes right here. Just like this. You can see that as I brush, you can see the mask on the image. And it's looking all good. Again, we can click in a corner here. Just one click, hold the shift and click somewhere around here. And again, hold shift and click here. And again, hold shift and click here. After this, to finish it off again, holding shift, creating and filling the middle and we looking good. Now we want to zoom in so we can do that by using command or control plus again, again, using spacebar moving around. And what we can do now, we can hit the backslash key on our keyboard and that will bring the mask in. So we can zoom in even little closer. And from here again, we're going to be filling the space. And all we have left to do are these little corners. So for that, we can zoom in even closer. We can adjust the size of our brush and very quickly, we can just fill these in. And finally, the fourth corner, same idea, make the brush a little bit bigger. You can use the bracket keys on your keyboard to adjust the size of a brush quickly. And once you're done, you can again hit backslash key. Now, by doing that, the mask will disappear and our neon will appear. Before we're going to continue, let's just hide the template. You can right click on it and choose hide or remove. So for us, we're going to click on hide. And then we're going to come back to our neon menu. And from here, again, we're going to use indent. However, since we have removed the middle of the effect, or the middle of the neon. Now, when you bring it down, if you keep bringing it down, you will see that it will actually create much sharper edge and much sharper corner on that element. So it really is up to you what you want to create. You can create and you can create a really sharp element or you can push it around a little bit and stick with the round. However, this is another cool way on how you can create neon elements using the Neon and Glow tool. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neon shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neon products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neon. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.